Hey, good morning, and welcome to my sacred space. If you have looked at my website lately, you know that with June becomes a, um, a, a month-long reading that I'm going to post sometime in this first week of June. I think it's probably going to be on Friday since I have a dentist appointment on Friday early, and I won't be doing the daily pick, so I'm probably going to replace it with the June love reading. Um, unless I have someone who has a specific love question that they want to ask that will comment down below, I can, the love reading can be your question. If you leave your question about love in the comments b below, otherwise, um, the question on the card is going to be, how can I receive and give the most love that I can? Something along those lines. Unless you come up with something more specific that you'd like me to read on love. Um, anyway, that's that. I'll probably be recording that. I don't know. I might record it today. So if you're going to comment, go ahead and leave that comment. Um, I really uh, appreciate each of you that come to see me um, daily or who come to see me sometimes or or whatever. I just really... it It just overwhelms me that um, so many of you are willing to support, support me and are, are enjoying your daily readings as well. Um, always remember that you are the mastiny, master, <laughs> you're the mastiny, you are the master of your own destiny, except when you're not, and that's when you need to let go and let God, because we don't do it alone, guys. We do it with each other. We we do it with God's help. We do it with the support of one another. This is this is uh, this life. It's not meant for us to be completely independent of one another. Um, even the most independent people need a hand every now and then. Need company. Need people. As Barbara Streisand would say. People, people who need people. So, <laughs> I won't go any further on that one. Um, so, this meditation uh, is, let's just, let's just get going here. Um, this week we have a theme card and it's the moon. So, we've been studying this card all week. Um, if any of you have been wanting to learn how to read tarot someone one of my um followers actually told me that they are learning from watching these videos so that might be a really good thing to do if you're interested in learning tarot is to watch these daily videos because when you do them every single day or when you at least do a daily pick every single day um and we're doing four it really does help someone learn the cards Oftentimes you'll see the same card and I may read a different thing off of that card because it's where my intuition pops in. Um, also, I may say different things. I don't just read what's on the cards, but I do. Th things come out of my mouth sometimes that um, that have to do with the card. That it, Anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a thing. It's a thing. So, um, we'll pick up my moon card again and what I wanted to say about the moon card today I actually have written down over here so I'm going to grab that <clears throat> while I'm holding this card and then I'm going to hold the card again better okay there we go that's I think that's I think that's better so um the moon has it traditionally in the um moon cards the moon has three faces you see there's a person in the forefront with their face covered with their hands that's the dark side of the moon and then we have uh, the full moon and the quarter moon it looks like up there um, but they also relate to the virgin the mother and the crone those are the three stages of a woman's life um, virgin mother crone i happen to be a crone i'm on that side and i'm real happy to be here um 
So the word lunatic comes from the word lunacious. They also use lunacious in conjunction with the words moonstruck. And both of those words were actually commonly used in law in the 1800s all the way to the 1930s. They would, uh, when they, when you would go to a court of law and someone had done something crazy, if it was on the full moon, they called it being moonstruck or they called it lunacious. Um, it wasn't until 1930 that they changed it to unsound mind. And that is your lesson on the moon today. Watch out. She can make you cray. Okay. Now we're going to move on. Moving on. Moving on. That was just five minutes, guys. Let's start with the honey citrine. Oh, I was going to mix them up a little bit more, but that's okay. And I do have my light today. So I will be showing up closest of the rocks right now. And then we'll move on to turning over the rocks. And here is my beautilicious honey citrine. So if you like that rock or if it calls to you, that's what you will be choosing today. This is my gorgeous, gorgeous tiger eye palm rock. I just learned that there is such a thing as a palm rock. They actually sell palm rocks. Every palm rock I've ever gotten, I haven't purchased, I found. Um, I do like to carry rocks in my pockets. Um, this is not necessarily a palm rock. They might sand this down and call it a worry stone because a worry stone is when you do like this. Um, I did know about worry stones and I do I use my palm rocks as worry stones most, sometimes. Um, this one, I'm, I promise I will look up that name as soon as I, as soon as I finish this recording. So I'll have the name of this piece for you as soon as I can. And this one, we just call it copper ore, even though it's beautiful and has other stuff. Uh, oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. Yeah, well, I ha there's another name for it, but I can't remember what it is. So I'll look that up too. I'll get better at that. Um <clears throat> And without further ado, we will start the Honey Citrine card. What's behind there? Oh, I've got to put this little light down, turn it off, make it not flashy. And here you have the Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups is the same thing as the Seven of Hearts. If you chose this card today, you need to trust your intuition today. You see that water there? Um, water has a lot to do with intuition. Um, this is a really good day for creativity, for finding your muse, for writing some poetry, for gaining inspiration. This is a really good day for you to see things more clearly with your psychic discernment. That is something that I work on all the time is my psychic discernment. I actually do exercises sometimes having to do with blindfolds so that I can learn to use my third eye, which is something I truly believe in. I've seen, uh, well, when you hang out with uh, Indians from India, you hear stories and you see things, and when you read books, oh my goodness. Anyway, you don't have to believe, but I do. And you don't have to believe for it to be true. Isn't that something? So if you have the seven of cauldrons today, tackle something uh, creative or tackle it in a creative way. And so now we're going to go on to our gorgeous tiger eye rock here. And we're going to turn over your card. And there he is, the beautiful knight of cups, the gorgeous and charming, the protective... person, the sensitive lover, the ladies man. If you have this card today, um, sometimes it comes with a message. Uh, sometimes it comes, it's usually a good message. It's usually something, um, maybe even a proposition. Um, so if you got this card today, look for a message, message, the arrival of something, some good news today. Um, also, this is a day to practice nonviolence. If you're already someone that practices nonviolence, and when I say practice, I had to practice.
practice nonviolence. Like, practice, study, figure out how to do other things. Because I think I've said before, but if you're new or if you haven't heard, I used to be a real scrappy kid. Man, I moved to a new school every year and I fought all the time and I had to practice nonviolence. Um, if you are someone who resorts to violence, it is so satisfying, isn't it, to see that bully get punched in the nose? Or that kid who'd been spitting on you to punch in his face <laughs> and throw him down the stairs. Uh, today, practice violence, pra practice nonviolence, not violence. Um, if you're already someone who's nonviolent, that's something that you can build on today and you can possibly teach others. Maybe you're the messenger today and in bringing nonviolence into a situation. I'm thinking a lot about this card, um, the Knight of Cups, having to do, I, I don't know if I brought them forward, having to do with violence and nonviolence and, and, um, because of the riots that have been going on, um, that that brings the that aspect of this card to the forefront for me, and that's why I'm reading that part today. So today, if you got this card, that's what I want you to do: is practice nonviolence. If you're already a very nonviolent person, I want you to teach nonviolence to someone else. Uh, us violent people, we need alternatives. And now we're going to pick up the stone, the card behind uh, that stone today. And it is the beautiful and the gorgeous and the lovely, the queen of Pentacles. Sometimes she represents uh, someone in, the li in your life and sometimes she represents you. Um, she is a very compassionate and nurturing. She is the mother of queens. She's a motherly queen. Um, she is very practical, intellectual, philosophical. Um, she's very intuitive. Um, if she is someone that you know in your life today, this is someone that I would like you to reach out to and give her, give her some comfort today. If she's you, I think you need to wrap yourself up in some comfort today. There's something about her being in need today of some love and some nurturing herself. She is the one I'm plugging in. Uh, I'm plugging in my camera, which happens to be my phone because it says the battery's running low. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the copper ore, and that's your gorgeous stone. We're going to turn over this card, and we have the knight, the knight of swords. No, the king of swords. Oh, I have to tell you something. I laid the cards out twice today, and I'm feeling a little guilty about it, but they it works out. Um, I pulled, I shuffled and shuffled, and I shuffled really well, and I realized I'm even using a different deck than I was, but I pulled a reading that I did for a client, um, and it wasn't even the same deck. When I first pulled it, I was like, oh, wait, did I shuffle? And I burned all the cards, and I was like, that's that reading I did for this client the other day. It was really odd. Anyway, the King of Swords was in it, in the reading. And he happened to be inverted. So that is the the dark side of the King of Swords. And while I usually don't read the dark side of the cards in your daily reading, um, because when I first pulled him and because he was in the same position as the previous reading I did for another client, um, we're going to talk about the dark side of him today. He can be, if you're on the wrong side of him, you don't have a chance, basically. He is a deadly, strategic, arrogant, sometimes cruel, and sometimes perverse. Um, 
he can sometimes have not such a great intention when it comes. He's a very powerful king. He's the oldest king. He's the high king. And a lot of times when you get to a position that high up, you've done some things to get there that may not be mm, the, the nicest things. Um, this king is also intellectual and has a sharp mind. Here's the thing. This king is representative of your subconscious today. If you're having some dark thoughts, feeling like doing something evil to get your way or something that's not so you, reconsider it. If it is you, if that's what, if this is who you are and this is describing you and you're, uh, a person of power that have gotten there through some ways that maybe aren't so uh, traditional or so, uh, you know, maybe you've done some things to get there, step, step on some heads. Um, well, I don't know what I would tell you because I'm not a person that has ever sought power. So anyway, if he is, if he is your subconscious today, um, I would suggest that you soothe your dark thoughts uh, with a way that you know how to do that. Apparently, because uh, the King of Swords is such a great and good king, um, everybody has a dark side. So don't beat yourself up over it. Okay? And if your dark side isn't as dark as what I talked about, that's cool. I don't mean to worry or scare anyone. What I think you should be doing today is take some time to take a walk in nature. Take some time to calm and cool your mind and your soul. Whatever it takes. A nice, long, hot bath. A cool shower and some vig vigorous exercise. A walk in nature. A swim. Whatever it takes for you to soothe your soul and mind. That is your assignment today. And so now we've come to the conclusion, sadly, sadly, and it's only been about 17 minutes total. So if you're spending time today doing this, you're not spending a lot of time. And that's also something I appreciate about this meditation is that it's, that it's really pretty short and sweet, even though it seems like I'm talking a lot. Um, so thanks for watching and, and please take the time to like and share and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I will be thinking of you throughout the day. So don't be shy about booking an appointment so that we can talk. You can call me on the phone. You can book from my website. Somebody was having problems booking from my website the other day. And so they called me and that's fine. I, I love hearing from you guys. So call me to book. Use my website. Also, um, remember that Friday, June 5th, um, we're having a full moon. It starts at 5.12 p.m. Central Time. Um, it's the June moon, or otherwise known as the Strawberry Moon. But because my cards have been popping out that moon enough to make it a card of the week, I say she's going to be a very significant moon, especially to those of you who are listening to my readings. Thank you very much for all that you do. And I do love you and appreciate you. Thank you. Bye.